How's it going today, guys? Well, we are back at the top kick. Um, it is almost mid-January. It's fucking cold outside. But, uh, yeah, we're just... It's winter time. What else are you going to do? Why not? Let's do a project. Here we go. Well, let's go back up this ladder. I got the uh, right side completely welded on the inside. Took my straight edge off. Now it's a little rough under the edges yet, but uh, there it is. It's all welded in. I still got to do a bit of grinding and stuff just to smooth it up a little bit, but it is now one solid box on this side. And that side there still has to be welded. The floor's welded. I just got to do some finish up on the sides. But uh, it's a hell of a lot of piecing together. And one hell of a lot of welding wire. I've been through a lot of welding wire. And no, I'm not using flux core. I am actually using straight MIG and gas. Because when you're welding stuff like this, there's no point in even trying flux core because all you're going to do is make a mess. And that's no good. Body metal is kind of tough to weld, especially when you're using old stuff. That's okay. We're getting there, slowly. But, uh, yeah, I took the fender flares off, and I'm kind of glad I did, is because I found a lot, excuse me for a minute, guys, I found a lot of rod underneath them, and if you're gonna do the job, you're gonna do it right, right? Right. So anyways, this is, these are some sections here that were bad. I've cut them out. I'm gonna use my piece of Swiss cheese parts box cut some panels and replace them. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna glass everything in. But uh, this is one side. And I got this all pretty much welded together. Now I gotta do a lot of glass work here, guys. And when I'm done, it'll look just like a factory box. It does look a little rough under the edges. But I promise you, it will not look like this when I'm done. The filler caps, I've cut all the brackets out. Well, not this one yet, but this one laid it in flat. I'm going to weld all the way around it and fill it, fill the whole thing. I'm going to feather this whole side. And when I am done, it'll look awesome. There's no point in having those. Now, the guy that is on YouTube that did a box like this and uh, gave me the idea, and thank you very much. Um, awesome work. His truck's fantastic. I just love it. And I've had a lot of guys say, well, Sean, why didn't you just shorten the frame? You shorten the frame, if you got dentures, you're not going to have them by the time you're done. It's going to shake them right out of your face. And to be honest with you, I want to be different. i seen the other guy down in the U.S., what he did, and I absolutely loved it. It just makes it more, with a truck this size, it just kind of gives it more of the pickup truck look. Because if you put a, a short well, basically an 8-foot box in a truck this size would just look like a short box. And it would probably give you one of the roughest rides you've ever had in your life. And like I said, if you are if you got dentures, by the time you get out of the truck, you won't have any. But uh, who knows? It's just me. I just like to be different. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing there. So I should have all this side welded today. And hopefully the body panel's in by the end of the weekend. And here's this side. Like I said, took the fender flares off this side too and found a lot more rot on this side. It was rotted up here to the uh, to the body line. So like I said, I've just cut the bat out of it. I'm going to put a piece back in it. It takes a long time to get these to fit correctly. And they're just going to be rough fit because when I'm done, I'll be glassing all of them in. So you can, there's, there's bad sections. You may as well just cut them out. You're not really gonna see this point anyway, so you're not gonna see because the fender flare goes around here like this. So, well, shit, I'll just patch them up. You will see this, but when I'm done with this contour, you won't even notice it. There's that section. Now that's still rough, guys. That's not complete yet. And underneath here, once I get it all welded together, I'm gonna turn her upside down and get the old sandblaster out. And um, I'm not going to use sand. I'm probably going to use a bead blast. 
rubberized bee blast, so it's not harsh because if I use sand, I can pretty much guarantee there's probably going to be the sections that I'm going to pull straight through. And I'm not into that because once that is done, I'm going to have the bugger oiled, oiled, and oiled, probably using crown press proofing, which should save it because this thing here is not going to be ran in the winter time at all. Um, I absolutely got no use for it in the winter time, and why I bought this truck because in my business, I never thought it was going to get as big as it, it has, and now I'm starting to get into bigger boats. So I need a bigger truck, and I think my main purchase this year is going to probably be a hydraulic boat trailer. So I can carry things up to about 34 feet. Permanents up here in Canada isn't a bad thing. Um, you pay yearly for them. Just when you get down into Toronto and stuff like that, you you got to have a permit for every every county you go through. But I don't intend to go to Toronto. My area is Lake Huron. That's where I want to stay. But uh, yeah, that's what's going on. And uh, I want to make a quick shout out to um, one lonely farmer, Wes. Sorry I missed your feed this morning. I wish I could have been there. I sent you some pictures last night in the email. You know what I'm up to. And now you see just what kind of work this is. And I don't even have to tell you, you know. And guys, if you want a really good YouTuber, check out One Lonely Farmer. Wes, he's for real. And I'm telling you, he he would make me look like a piss ant when it comes to YouTubing. But I'm not a serious YouTuber. I just do this for a little bit of fun. But he's for real. He does John Deere tractors, you name it. He builds. The guy's for real. No bullshit. Tells no lies. Straight to the fucking point. This is the way it is. And I like that in the guy. He's awesome. Just just awesome. But uh, anyways, like I said, guys, top kick. She's coming slowly. We're getting there. I'm hoping by next week, if I can get the tin work done today or tomorrow... That will be into glassing next week, and I'll give you a little bit of a thing of how we do glass. Oh, and if you guys are going to ask, I'll guarantee it. Why are you using glass? Because if you use Bondo, all it's going to do is crack and fall out. I am not using fiberglass from your local body shop. I am going to use an industrial grade glass, being that I am a marine mechanic and do marine repairs on fiberglass hulls and stuff like that, I am going to use marine grade fiberglass, okay? The stuff is tough, it's three part. You just don't take your fine hair and mix your hardener. This stuff here, you actually have an activator, you have a hardener, and then you add your glass. And if you mix it wrong, you got a big fucking fire, big fire. But it goes as hard as nails, and it'll actually be stronger than what that body steel is. But it will still have flex, and that's the big thing. It has to be able to move. That's why I'm not using Bondo. Guys that use Bondo, have fun. <laughs> it's going to look like shit. And as soon as the box flexes, it's just going to crack, or your, your body panels in your vehicle, as soon as it... It flexes, it's going to crack, it's going to fall out, and you're back to square one. This stuff I use will bond right to the uh, steel and will not come out. The stuff is as hard as nails. It would actually be harder to drill the fiberglass than it would be this tin. Um, and like I said, it, it's, it's really, really strong, guys. It, it's, we use it in the bottom of boats. I did a boat two years ago. A guy come in... I don't know what the hell he was doing, if he was impaired or what the story was. But anyways, he got a little too close to the shoreline. And he put a four-foot hole in the bottom of his boat. Now, it was a hell of a lot of work. We had to pretty much tear out everything in the cabin. Everything. Just to get to the hole. Because you got to start inside and you got to start outside. But when I was done filling that hole, that boat now has been in the water for four years. Has never leaked a drop. Has not cracked nothing and the guy's really really happy but it took me almost four months to fix it it was a pile of work 
But that's basically what I'm gonna do here. Same idea. I gotta I gotta contour everything in just to make it right. But when I'm done, I'm pretty sure the outlook will look fantastic. And we got a long way to go, but we're gonna get there. There's no reason of rushing it. If you rush it, you're just gonna fuck up. And there's no there's no reason for that, but oh yeah, update. The punk ass little shit kid actually came over to my house, him and his dad. And his dad is actually a pretty good guy. And uh, the kid actually apologized to me and Jacob, thanks. I, you know what, it, it's not the fact, I'm not trying to, to uh, discourage you what you wanna do. My point was it was an old boat. I didn't wanna see you putting that kind of money into it when I had a perfectly good used engine here you could buy for like I told you this morning 500 bucks it runs put it in go fishing go have fun there's no point in rebuilding something that's old and putting a lot of money into something that's really old I'm not trying to uh, screw anybody it's just I didn't want to see you spend that kind of money on something old and you don't understand you didn't understand until your dad came over and then it was pretty good so Anyways, thanks guys, I appreciate that. And um, we'll get you fixed up, that's for sure. And, uh, but of course this has to come first. I need this truck in April, and that's for sure. But anyways guys, if you like my uh, videos, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And check out One Lonely Farmer. I think you'll like what you see. Cheers.